Hey, on this episode of Charlie's Open Mic, we're going to talk to Jim Ballard again, a songwriter from Akron. We had him on last year. This time around, he's going to talk about a 130-year-old Washburn guitar. Stick around. Hey, welcome to Charlie's Open Mic. My name is Charlie Mossbrook, and this week's show, Jim Ballard joins me again. He's going to talk about a 130-year-old Washburn guitar how he got it, how he fixed it up, and how it sounds, and he's going to play a little music. So uh, let's go and talk to Jim now. Hey, Jim Ballard, welcome back to the show. Well, thank you. It's always great to see you. Uh, so since we uh, started changing the format a little bit, and I've, I've sort of gone for a, just an open-ended kind of idea, I, 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 one of the ideas I had at first was to look at really cool guitars that people have, and uh, and you've got a very, very cool old guitar. Um, so you want to tell me a little bit about it? What, what do you got there in your arms? Well, it's a, from what I was told when I found it years and years ago, it's a 1890s Washburn. Washburn uh, started in about 1883. And these parlor, these are called parlor guitars, which are kind of on the rise again now, I guess. Mm -hmm. All the companies are making them. But they're a little uh, shorter scale, small bodied guitar. That's what used to be the thing. Um, Late 1800s, I guess, where, when they uh, had these, and, yeah, everybody had them. But I, I saw this hanging in a, in a, there used to be a coffee house called Boulder Junction. In the daytime, it was a music store. In the evenings, it was a coffee house. And uh, I saw it hanging there, and it, it wasn't workable. The, the saddle here was uh, split. This is not the original saddle. Saddle was split and not workable. Uh, mainly, that was the reason why it wasn't workable. The rest of it was fine. And uh, at the time, um, uh, Roger Phillips worked there. Roger's still around doing a lot of this kind of thing. And a uh, uh, wonderful musician and luthier. And uh, I said, can we restore this? It had this all here is abalone. And all of this around the edges is mother of pearl, also real typical then. And you can see how cool <laughs> the whole thing is. And uh, some, of the, some of the inlays were missing. Uh, some of the edge was missing around here and some of the, the around the whole the abalone but they but there was some on all of it too so they knew what the materials were and roger had to order them from like california i guess and get a just get a card of them in it carve out you make a template and carve out the pieces and he restored it to to workable and he carved a new bridge knowing what the bridges were like then mm -hmm. and uh, they call it a pyramid bridge it's got little pyramids here mm -hmm. and uh and, and it worked. <laughs> so uh, obviously I don't take it out and use it. I never would never do such a thing as put a pickup in it or inside it or any of that. Um, uh, but I've used it on recordings a lot, including including uh, uh, the song that we're gonna talk about today with this, uh, which is why I use it. The guitar is well over a hundred years old. Do you, do you have a date on when it was built? Um, they told me it was gonna be uh, early 1890s probably. Washburn started in the 1880s uh, the company Washburn, and they were very, very active around that time. And and I had looked up provenance on these kind of guitars a while back. And from what I could tell, uh, the 1890s made a lot of sense for these kind of guitars. And I love these because early on, I thought the guitars that I saw Joan Baez and Bob Dylan using in their early part of their career were similar to these, and they were. Yeah. Um, and then also, at the time, I was really into... Um, like uh, Blind Blake and uh, Robert Johnson and, you know, Blind Lemon Jefferson and all that. And if you look at their, there's very, as you probably know, there's very few old pictures of all of those. But in all of them, they have little guitars like this. And I thought, well, that's cool, you know. So uh, he, he uh, I know it probably doesn't sound very good on Zoom, but it pretty good, actually. So, yeah, that's kind of was my original reason for getting it because I was so into especially especially blind Arthur Blake is is that a steel string instrument no. it is and, and I understood too that you that sometimes people would string them with nylon string guitars they don't have a truss in the neck like our guitars do now they do you know classical guitars don't either mm -hmm. um, but I use very light strings on this and as you can see I'm capo if I I'm, I'm tuned down a half a step so this is my capo position to be in standard tuning and it, it, it keeps the attention off the neck. And I've had, I've had this guitar for over 40 years and, and it's, it's, the neck has been fine. 
And there again, I, I watch what I do with it. And I used to put silk and steel strings on them, um, but I wanted something a little brighter. Now, silk and steel strings do have a little less tension, uh, but I wanted something a little brighter than that to help it poke through somewhat, you know? So those are just standard, you know. Well, that's a beautiful guitar. He did a great job of restoring it. And you really probably got it in pretty amazing shape considering the age of that instrument. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all mahogany uh -huh. for those who like that kind of thing. Nice inlay, mat book matched in the back. It's just really a neat, a neat old guitar. And uh, I just, I don't, I don't know if I showed you how closely you can see the, how nice the inlays are, yeah, but beautiful. pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, it's just, and I, and I liked it because what I thought over the years was uh, how many people had owned it and where it had been and where it had traveled to and where, you know, what songs, what music had been played on it because you know, the wood has life and whatever it's been played on it is still in there somewhere. And I thought, you know, I, I just think that way about it. But I, when it came to do time to, uh, to do the song, a hundred year old Charlie song, uh, I chose to use this one um, kind of for that reason. I, I, it just fit together for me. Uh, this guy I had known, uh, I met him in his nineties and he used to be out actually on the towpath and in the gym doing some walking and running. And I, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, he's in his 90s. And I started calling him. He said he wanted to live to be 100. So I started calling him 100-year-old Charlie all the time. Well, he, he did eventually pass away. And I'd written the song about him. But what I thought about him was the same thing about the guitar, all the places he'd been and the the, the arc of his life. He was born during World War One and and died after people had been on the moon. And uh, wow, you know, <laughs> so I kind of uh, equated him with the guitar. So I used a guitar and a song just to kind of honor Charlie. So that was the reason I went ahead and used that, this guitar. He was born in the year of the Simon Coffee and Came up in the Delta downside of New Orleans the poor boy was he, he never had no family Everybody talking about that ain't no way to be No shoes, no socks, keeping rocks down the Mississippi Hanging out down by the docks, trying to hide his ship And then he sailed all seven seas He saw everything he could see all women and whales and tails, it was a hell of a trill. Yeah, a hundred year old Charlie seen it all. Hundred year old Charlie seen it all. Seen him come, seen him go, seen him rise and fall. Yeah, a hundred year old Charlie seen it all. Just bold damn depression, life got hard Thinking he'd try his hand down in the baseball yard he Never did it lack the nerve He just could not hit that curve So it's back to hiding out from the bulls down in the railroad yard A thousand dusty back roads he did hitch Robbed and left for who knows in a ditch Then he got back on that road He always kept that hobo coat All the way to the day he caught up to that son of a bitch Yeah, a hundred year old Charlie seen it all Yeah, a hundred year old Charlie seen it all He was there when the baby Called his shot and he hit it to that wall. A hundred year old Charlie seen it all. Then he joined up on that day the Arizona got sung. Well, then he went downtown that night and he got real drunk. Then he crowded on that LST. Yeah, that's Jack Norman. Now he's 
ribbons and his medals all lie on the deep blue sea. Yeah, hundred year old Charlie seen it all. A hundred year old Charlie seen it all. From the beaches of Calais all the way to Omaha. A hundred year old Charlie seen it all. I started life, had a wife and a whole lot of kids Settled in, did the walk and never talking about the things he did He seen the men walking out in space And then ran it out of human race For a century and then some just in case A hundred year old Charlie seen it all Hundred-year-old Charlie seen it all. Married in three pretty women, and he outlived them all. A hundred-year-old Charlie seen it all. A hundred-year-old Charlie seen it all. Hundred-year-old Charlie seen it all. Their Mexico wall. Hundred year old Charlie seen it all. No, he seen it all. No, he seen it all. Hey, thank you for watching Charlie's Open Mic this week, and thank you to Jim Ballard for sharing your guitar, your song, and your story with us. Uh, as always, please hit that subscription link down below. Please ring the bell next to the subscription link, and that'll give you notifications to let you know when we're doing a new show. And you can find us at charliesopenmic.com, where there is a Patreon link, and you can help support the show. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.